Vulnerability is, is the key to, to the, the commission of these offences. As you said, this is poor regions of the world and people will do just about anything for money, including selling their own children. A couple of years ago I was on a holiday in Southeast Asia with my then girlfriend and on one evening in Cambodia we went out to a bar and had a few drinks and while she was away doing some other things, I was approached by a person who offered a, a child uh, for me to have sex with. And my initial reaction was disbelief. I'm, I'm not naive, I'm aware that, that these problems, at the time, aware that these problems existed overseas. But I guess it was a natural reaction to not want to believe that it was really happening. Having been an investigator most of my career as, a, as an adult, uh, I have a very inquisitive nature and this got my attention and I wanted to know a little bit more about it. I wanted to know how far it went, how big the problem was and whether what I'd heard was actually accurate or the problem was worse. I, I decided to um, follow this person and, and find out exactly what they were offering and uh, how legitimate it really was. And what I found was uh, for about $20 Australian, uh, I had a choice of maybe three or four different girls aged between seven or eight through to maybe 12, and that they were being kept at a place not far away from the bar, and that I could take them to any location that I wanted to, and that shocked me and it stuck with me. What we've found out of the 85% of, of, of the offences being committed against these children is that a lot of it is being facilitated by local organised crime groups and there are very few, if any, organisations that are prepared to tackle the organised crime groups that are facilitating a market. So I see this as being a very similar model in that by targeting just the users of the market, you're not stopping the market. These people will continue to come there and as long as there's a market, there'll be someone willing to supply it. And this market is huge. It rivals the drug trade. The trafficking of human beings, especially children, is very, very profitable. So we're talking about sophisticated crime groups that have utilised corruption in a corrupt part of the world to infiltrate government and, and law enforcement to create a market that is very attractive for foreign nationals coming to these countries. There is an identified gap that is not being filled. The police are not trained enough, they're not resourced enough, and this type of crime is not a high priority. Nothing's getting solved. And I've spent eight months trying to come up with a way that we can address this, and I think our model can. And we're getting very good feedback from the government organisations, the law enforcement, and other large NGOs like UNICEF that have looked at what we're trying to do and believe that what we're doing is needed and that we do have the capacity to do it, providing we can get the funding. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a, been a personal decision and I found that, to be honest, I don't think I had a decision. Once, once I'd seen what I've seen and then continued to follow that path, I've seen more and then I've seen more. Having run a project in Southeast Asia and, and been involved in 
a number of investigations. I've been involved in the raids on brothels uh, and seeing children that are chained to the floor. I've seen children that are stowed away in, in, in boxes uh, on boats. I've seen children in positions and situations that they should never be put in. It became a, uh, not a decision of whether I should do this, but there's no reason I shouldn't. And whilst I've had to make a number of sacrifices to do this, uh, which I guess have been difficult in some ways, I've only got to think about some of these kids that I've seen and that all goes away.